All right, guys, we're back again with another adventure today. Today, I'm actually not even at home today. I'm on location at my parents' house. I'm gonna be redoing their network. That'll be a different video, but today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up a radius with the built-in radius server that Unify has. So let's get into that video. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is if you already have a network, Wi-Fi network, great. If you don't, create one. I created one here called test. And all basically you gotta do is once you've created your network, you're gonna to wanna, to, it's gonna be an auto. We're gonna to wanna to set this to manual and we're gonna to wanna to go down and change security protocol. Now you can have it WPA3 Enterprise or you can have it WPA2 Enterprise. I like it on both. I mean, eventually I would like to only have it on three, but certain devices still don't support WPA3. So you'll have problems, especially Wi-Fi 5 devices. Wi-Fi 6 shouldn't have any problems, but Wi-Fi 5 definitely will have problems. So um, first thing you wanna do is enable that. And you're gonna say the default radius profile, that's what we want is the Unify. So we'll set that to unify. Leave everything else as correct. And we'll hit apply. And then everything hasn't changed. So if I go back to it, let's go to test again, make sure we got a uh, UDM radius. Everything's the same. Make sure the fettings take effect. Everything's good. We're gonna go back to our profile things. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna to go to profiles and you should see radius. We're gonna click it. Now here's that default one that Unify uses. So it's already here. Now if you have a different authentication protocol, radius server somewhere else that you like this better than Unify's, well then you can add that in too by creating new and adding all your authentication server, your ISP, your pre-shared secret key. You can do all that stuff. But today we're just doing the Unify one. So all you're gonna do is click it before it wouldn't have it pre-generated the, the secret, but you can either key see it right here or you can edit it and name it whatever you want and then hit apply. It doesn't really matter. This is, I mean, they have a default one. It's probably really secure more than yours. So just either keep it or change it. This depends on your, you know, what you want to do. Uh, radius server, we want that enabled, obviously, so it'll be enabled. We want to select wireless network, because this is only going to be applied to this wireless network. You can do it on wired networks too, but there's other security you can use other than radius. You can use Mac filtering and all that stuff too. <coughs> but you can have it do radius too on your wired networks. Authentication port 812. Uh, accounting port 813. And then uh, this is at... 3,600 seconds. I would like to change this to 60. That's my thing, I like that. Uh, tunnel reply, yes. Encrypt communication between the server and the client. We wanna do that, that's awesome, cool. And then here is where you can add your users. So your users as in family. Now you could do it as in a person or you could do it as a whole department too. So let's say this is the lab department. Everybody in the lab is gonna use this login or you could do it to individual persons themselves too. So we go create a new one and we'll just do this for a person. We'll call this person Goku, Goku. And if I, whatever name and the way you write it here, that's exactly how they have to write it when they log in. So if I do Goku with a capital, they can't use lowercase Goku G, they have to use a capital G. Password, we're gonna call this dragon. So I'm gonna do capital D R A, oops, D R A G O N. Make sure, yes, dragon. VLAN ID zero is the default VLAN ID. Um, now, if you have any other VLANs like VLAN one, two, you can just put those little notations to whatever and it will kind of generate some stuff for you. And it's pre pretty much generates the correct stuff that you should have right off the bat. It's pretty freaking cool. So I'm just gonna leave it at zero. And this is not the default though. Actually, should I do it on the default? Yeah, it really doesn't matter because I'm not gonna be off it quick anyways. This is not in my house, but let me go check it just for you guys can proof. Let's just go to okay for now. We're gonna redo this again, but I just wanna make sure which VLAN. I'm gonna go to networks, I'll leave this.
we're gonna go to VLAN ID's guest. So VLAN ID, as you can see right here, is three. So I want this to go to three or this person. So what I'm gonna do is go back to profiles, radius, this default, we're gonna enable this again, leave that key starting here because I didn't save anything, change this to 60. And we're gonna go down here and create a new user. And when this user, who it is, was Goku, no more dragon, as we can see, dragon. You can have more complex passwords, which you should have. Make them pretty long, weird, crazy. Sometimes you can even have a, a password generator that will pre-generate weird passwords for you. Awesome, too. Uh, then we're going to go to VLAN. It was three, I think. Yeah, three. And then we want it on tunnel 13 uh, for VLANs. And then we want um, six. So right here, this is going to be six. So this is just the internet protocol that's going to allow it to go to all the other stuff on the network. There's other ones here too. You can have IP4, IP3 addresses, but we want to tunnel it to all these. So it'll just be access to the, this VLAN, all the stuff on. So we'll go to create user and here it is. User has been created. We're going to apply and boom. Now we have our user. So now if we go to, I'm on travelers too. <gasps> We're going to search, see if we can find it, test connect and now it's going to ask for a username our username is capital g okay you password is dragon and we're going to hit connect and yes and there we go and now we are connected you just set up your own radius on your unify router it's pretty easy pretty dang cool it's a lot more secure it's one of the securest ways you can secure your wi-fi network with radius is considered one of the most secure so i hope this video helps for you hey if you guys like these videos like subscribe and hit that bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my videos i did these videos for you this is pretty dang cool it's really easy and there's so many other steps you can do so like we're in it right here if you wanted to do a department like i said you can call it a department but hey how do we want to see these names like i'm connected right now maybe we want to see this with all the connected devices so all you got to do is if you're in this protocol right here we're going to go to search and we're going to go to columns and we want to do identity so now we should be able to see there's goku right here in identity one x identity look there's my laptop on the guest network test and it's Wi-Fi 5 on this network because I'm on my parents' house, which is going to be upgrading to all cool other Wi-Fi 6 and all this other stuff that they need. They don't need Wi-Fi 7. They, don't, that's, they just don't need that. But yeah, so look at this right here. So it says Goku now. Now they know, I know that Goku's using this computer. And that's the only way somebody that can get Goku is if they use that Goku name and Dragon. Otherwise, if they use something else, another Radius username, it's going to show it all right here. So you can know who's using it. And if your password gets compromised, this is the cool part right here. All you got to do is go back to settings, control panel, and we're going to go to, actually we'll go to profile, sorry. Profile, radius, here we go, username. You can just edit the password if you want to, and they'll give them a new password, or you can remove the user. And you can do that too here at the devices. So if we go back to here, we can go to, there it is, click on it, settings, and we can remove the user too, just like before. But yeah, you can change the password. But the cool thing about Radius is, if you have a network, obviously this would be cumbersome if you have a lot of users, but sometimes you can import your users from spreadsheets and stuff, but let's say, you have a lot of people that come in and they leave. They don't stay with the company or they leave. Instead of having to say, hey, everyone has to change the Wi-Fi and reconnect to the new Wi-Fi because we don't want that person being able to come back. All you gotta do is remove that user and their own password that only pertain to them. And then guess what? Everybody else can still use their stuff and it doesn't affect anyone on the network at all. So it's pretty cool that way. Uh, some printers too, just letting you know, some printers don't support radius. So what you might want to do is, uh, create a VLAN or just have, if you want them on that same network, you can do it locked to Mac address. So once you've connected your printers, you can select 
add a lock to MAC address. So you only can lock stuff by MAC address and I can show you that. So if we were to go to uh, settings again, Wi-Fi, let's just do this test one. Now what I can do is do, oh, where is that? There you go, MAC address filtering. And here's the cool thing, we can do allow. So if we go to add multiple or add client, so we can add, and here's all the stuff on the network. And I can just click devices and hit add, and I hit allow. So that means if your MAC address is not in this allow list, then you're not able to access that uh, the network, even if you have the right credentials, the right password, the right username, with less security though, because you would do this with less security. Like I said, this wouldn't be enterprise. This would be WPA, WPA3, and you, your printers can be able to connect and you'd be able to set it to, let's say, um, if it was the default VLAN, I need the printers to be able to connect to the default VLAN, then they would be able to connect to that. So it's pretty cool if you wanna be, because some printers, they don't support, um, you can print over VLANs, but scanning sometimes doesn't work. And it just depends on the model, the printer, whether it's enterprise grade printer or if it's a home printer. So you gotta think of it that way. And some people are like, so my printer, uh, I need to be able to scan to it from the printer to there, or my, my computer needs to be able to find it. And some people, times it's just harder for normal people to do it. So, but this is a way you can do it. So you can lock it to the MAC address so that nobody else other than these that are here, and these would be printer MAC addresses, because I'd be able to go to uh, add client and I'd be like, oh, let's see, where's a printer right now? Let's see, is there a printer offline? There printer, oh, there it is, HP printer, there it is. I would just hit add and then boom. And then I can remove them too. So you can remove them, like if we go here, 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 we're gonna add another one, add client. And I'm just gonna add the HP printer and hit add. And now this printer would be on its own. And we'll change this back to WPA2. And then this printer password, let's just call it printer. And then they would connect to test and they just connect printer. And then they would be able to go to the default VLAN. But if anybody else had went to test and put in printer, it wouldn't allow them access because they're not in this allow list. They could do the deny list too. And that means any MAC addresses in here is denied from accessing this, but that would be for different reasons. But yeah, so you can do that too. So that's pretty cool, huh? So yeah, hope this helps you guys. I know I do this for you guys. I hope you and your family can have a rock and rolling day. Peace out and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.